This is Coons Ford Turf Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. The eyes of Texas are upon us till Gabriel blows his horn. Ah, uh-uh. two years in a row, the Longhorns go down. Terps win 34-29. There are no eyes of Texas on us probably ever again. I doubt that Texas will ever schedule us again because they got shocked two years in a row. And Mr. Tom Herman is spinning because let's get it straight. Thoroughly outcoached by Matt Canada and the University of Maryland staff. Bring in my buddy Wayne Viner. Good rendition of the eyes of Texas, correct? Pretty good, pretty good. I'm waiting for you to do the Texas two-step. We'll have the camera on you next. We should have done it that before. But I, my, my dance on the post-game show was the Ray Lewis dance. Because once Ray Lewis talked to the team, I got word of it. I called you Saturday morning around 8 o'clock before the show. And I said, oh, it was a little earlier, Bruce. They was it earlier? Seven. You were excited. I was when I heard Ray Lewis talk to the squad. I said, "That's it. We're winning." I, I thought we. I thought the Terps were going to win no matter what. But when I heard that uh, fifty-two talked to the team, uh, I, that did it for me. That I, I don't know what he said, and nobody asked Kevin all the other uh, Canada. Yeah, but I asked Ray what he said, and he wouldn't tell I was you. on the field next to him and he wouldn't tell me yeah well maybe i wasn't old enough i don't know it's a secret that's why ray uses that special speech but if you ever want to hear what he might have said check out the stanford nit championship game when he talked to the team beforehand and it was it's really something to see and yes they won the nit for what that's worth (laughs) but wayne what i had i had an interesting day on the sideline especially in the first quarter to my right was Ray Lewis. To my left was Vernon Davis. And then I went down the other end of the field to be close to the offense, and Kevin Plank took my spot. So it was a star-studded Maryland sideline. And also down there in that little group was Colt McCoy, who played quarterback for Texas. He's now a Redskin backup quarterback. So it was a star-studded uh, little sideline down there as the Terps beat Texas. Well, uh Vernon Davis is a Terp Talk guy. He's been on the show several times and, uh, you know, always gets some ribbon for me for being a Redskin, but that's the way it goes. What a great day, Wayne. I don't know how to put it. It was just a great day, minus the tremendous leaks in the press box. All right. I've never seen anything like that in my life. But uh, we, we don't mean news leaks. We mean water leaks. Bruce, yeah. what happened to us? I don't know. I mean, it started to pour, and, you know, everybody was hanging around. We knew it was going to be a delay. You had no choice. You couldn't leave because you would have drowned in the water. It was so bad. So everybody hung around. Next thing you know, you walk in, and there's leaks everywhere in that press box. Everywhere. Buckets, bringing in water. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, the sun's out. It was unbelievable, except the field was affected. It was a squishy mess. That stadium's a dump. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You you almost drowned down there after the game. You well, stepped you, you, off of the there's an astroturf edge to the field, and then the field's grass. Yes, it was. And you were okay on the astroturf. You step in that grass, you start to sink. You, you know think what? It might have been too dangerous to play on. You know what? I had that in my mind. Fortunately, nobody got hurt, so you know they dodged that bullet, but. I don't know. I don't think a wet field, a wet field is as dangerous as like, uh, you know, a a hundred degree heat. I think a wet field, when you fall, you're not going to take the fall as hard, but you could slip and land on your back. And I don't know, but I don't think it was ever a thought of post of uh, canceling that game ever. So you still really like that stadium, don't you? Worst stadium in the world. No offense to <laughs> all my Redskin people out there and whatever, but that that stadium was wrong when it was built. It was built with private money, and it, and now it shows the wear and tear when it's 21 years old. It is not of NFL caliber, and uh, it's just not. You know, it's just. It's a maze. It's a parking. Tr- it's parking trouble. The concessions are embarrassing. Uh, I'm not going to knock the sight lines. They're fine, which is the most important thing. But uh, as for me, after Maryland got 
whipped up by Notre Dame, I said to myself, I'm not going back. But when they played Texas, I had to go back. But it was just disappointing, that's all. I mean, I, you know, I can't believe that Danny Snyder has a look for another stadium. But let's get to the game, Wayne. Let's get to the game. Let's talk about the coaching philosophy on offense of Matt Canada. How refreshing was that after being told year after year how great Walt Bell was? And uh, I never forget when when Randy was the coach and uh, he had Danny O'Brien. I'll never forget. We I forgot who the coordinator was, but we kept waiting for some. Yeah. Who? The one that sort of went bad with was Gary Crouton, who came from LSU. Guess where? Matt Canada came from LSU, but it looks to work a little better this time. Well, you got, you know, he, he stated, and of course, none of them are stars, but he's got three quarterbacks in the NFL. That says a lot. All right, it really does. And he was effusive with praise for. Uh, uh, Kasim Hill, the fact that here's Kasim Hill. You know, I don't know if you look, study the stats, Wayne, but the stats were dead even. 21 to 20 first downs, Maryland, 143, 142 yards rushing for Maryland, one yard plus in passing. The stats were unbelievably close. Total yards was within two, except one thing, and that was the turnovers. And the penalties. Texas and, had 100 yards in penalties and three turnovers, but. The turnovers uh, were the some, difference. So, turnovers were, but you have to give that to the defense. I mean, the penalties don't happen in a vacuum. A lot of the times penalties are called because somebody's running away from you or they beat you on the edge to get a sack and you hold. And they go, well, it was the penalties. And, you know, from watching NFL games, if you don't hold the guy, your quarterback gets wiped out. You're better off with the penalty. So the penalties are a little odd to look at because a lot of those were forced by Maryland's speed, size, and in some cases, dominance. Early on, Maryland was up 24-7, to and they were running away with the game. Uh, Texas came back. You got to give them credit. And when it was crunch time, Maryland came through. No false starts today, and that, that was a problem with Maryland before. No delay of game penalties, except the one they took on purpose that Texas declined. No turnovers. And very, very few negative yardage plays. So that's a hallmark of Matt Canada. And then that innovative running game is one of the reasons that Mason looked at him as a rising star at NC State, where he coached Joby uh, Brissett, who's with the Colts. He goes on to Pittsburgh, where Nathan Peterman, who's going to be facing your Baltimore Ravens, was schooled by Matt Canada. Then he goes to LSU and his quarterback there. Uh, I think he's still on a roster at this point. So it's three quarterbacks. But, man, that guy knows how to attack an offense, uh, take an offense to attack a defense. Well, this is what I liked. In the press conference on uh, Tuesday, he talked about he's got six or seven options to do with the ball running-wise. And he sure utilized them. All right? I mean, when, if I'd have told you before the game that Ty Johnson was going to rush for 30 yards with no TDs, you would have been worried that we were going to win. There's no doubt about it. And yet... Hello? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. And yet, uh, Fleet Davis and Jay Sean Jones, the freshman, and Tavon Jacobs, and uh, even Kasim Hill had a little running. Terrell Prig- Pigrome did okay running. It just didn't stop. And the uh, possibilities are endless with this squad. And we didn't even see McFarland. We didn't see Lolo Harris. Harrison. We didn't see really all the weapons that Maryland has on offense. And why? Because he says you're never going to know who's going to be the star of this team. Right. McFarland got two carries. Lolo got two carries. Jake Funk didn't really get the ball. So the time on the field as a Terp, he's been a touchdown machine. Looks like Maryland has some tight ends that can play, but I was really impressed by two things. One is Maryland's offensive line did pretty well down two starters. Derwin Gray didn't, didn't dress. And uh, Terrence Davis, who plays guard and has played since being a freshman, he got dressed, but he didn't come in the game. He's had a, a pectoral injury. And neither of those guys might go at Bowling Green on Saturday at 6. So 
Good job by three starters and uh, two backups. The other thing I was really impressed with is these freshman wide receivers. Whew, they can go get it, Bruce. Yeah, I what did would, you see out there? I saw some. Listen, I saw some wounded ducks being thrown out there that were caught. And certainly the touchdown by Jason Jones was a sight to behold. Uh, sixty, I think it was sixty-three or seventy-three yards. Sixty-three yards. I don't. I don't remember now, but uh, it was something. And even Jason's pass was great to uh, Tavon Jacobs, who was really utilized a lot. All right, and uh, he was certainly earned the honor of being in the post game. And Kasim Hill was cool as a cucumber. I loved. You know, I did have a chance to ask him a question about being out for the entire year, and then coming back. And being cool hand Luke, I mean, no interceptions, no fumbles, just the one botch play at the end zone that did cause a safety for uh, for Maryland. Uh, Maryland, right. let me Devin, go ahead. What did you make of the physical presence, the size of Kasim Hill up close? Yeah, uh, I was. I'll be honest with you. I, you know, he. Certainly, when you look uh, look on the field, you don't see a guy who's uh, doesn't look that huge, especially when you're playing Texas because they got such. You know, we watched the kickoff, and it was like uh, the Giants against the Midgets. It, they were so much bigger, but I think he's six two, weighs two forty, and he is he is a beefcake man. He is big. He is strong, and very very impressive. Very impressive size wise. So you talked about what Matt Canada said. My takeaway is when you asked Matt Canada, and this wasn't the first time anybody's asked about Kasim Hill, Matt Canada's response is, he has it. Right. Whatever it is in a quarterback, Kasim Hill has it. And boy, that it factor, that, that plays at any level. Well, we, you, we would be remiss in this game if we did not talk about uh, the tremendous play by Antoine Brooks. One bad play the entire game, but he's the guy who made a fantastic interception to end the game. And again, you don't know what happens if he doesn't make that interception. And he was all over the field with hard, you know hard tackles and just leading the defense. And I think that uh, Darnell Savage did himself a lot of good. Uh, he was special. He was special on Saturday. And you go right down the defense, and uh, yeah, they scored 24 points, but uh, it was like uh, in bunches and in the fourth quarter when Maryland had to hold them, they did it three times, caused three turnovers to put the game away. Yep, Trey Watson, who was a transfer from Illinois, he's in his fifth year, very interesting guy. Back when we used to be able to talk to the players, if there's one guy you want to talk to about life and politics and hard work and all that, Trey Watson is high on that list. He wears number 33 for Maryland. Uh, he had seven tackles, which tied with Antoine Brooks for the team lead. And he often got matched up against that receiver that sort of jumped off the field at you, which is number 84, Humphreys, sort of tight end wide receiver combo. Trey Watson, being a middle linebacker, is in there stuffing the run. Then he's got to run all the way to the sideline and cover this wide receiver tight end, and he comes up with an interception. Uh, he's the type of linebacker, and he reminds me a lot of some of the guys Maryland's had in the past, like a Wujak, uh, who you absolutely focus your defense around. Talk to uh, me about that defensive line. Yeah, that's what I want to uh, talk to you about. Judge, Judge Byron Coward's performance for me. He put a lot of pressure because he had a, they put two guys on, or they'd line up a tackle and they'd chip, so they're taking uh, another receiver like a tight end and having them bounce off a coward and then go out on the route, which slows everything down. They paid so much attention to him. Antoine Brooks was getting in the backfield, sometimes slightly blocked and sometimes not blocked. So they were paid a lot of attention there. They paid a lot of attention to Jesse Annabottom, who came in as sort of as a speed rusher. And suddenly the two guys in the middle, who are not household names, Ola um there's another a couple guys that play in the middle. Suddenly they're in there getting pressure. The, the interior guys got a sack or two. And these are guys that they picked up as walk-ons or were late transfers in, and they're having an impact because we have an outside rush. So, no, those guys didn't get great stats, 
but they changed the game. Speaking of impact, certainly the first play of the game when uh, Maryland had the lonesome guard. There was no right guard in. The, it was right. Yeah, it was right guard. No right guard in there. In a tribute to uh, Jordan uh, McNair and and Ty, you know they had a delay a game penalty and Tom Herman declined it. But it was I thought it really set the game. You know, set the emphasis there, and there was no doubt carrying the seventy nine flag and the way the players. To a man, just we're only talking about Jordan after the game and how proud they were. And it was one of the most emotional locker room scenes I've seen. All right. When they came in off the field, uh, it was it was extremely emotional. And just uh, it was just Canada and his crew did a great job. You know, they I mean, they really, really did in preparing this team for this game. I mean, I was. uh Greatly impressed, and uh, you never felt like the game was out of hand. I mean, when they took the lead, you still didn't think it was over. But every time Maryland had a bounce back, they did. And there was no you, – you never in your mind thought that Maryland was going to win 41-7 to or anything. Except without no, that – No, I think we all picked it about the same, which was about a 38-31, and it came in close in that range. Yeah, it sure did. And uh, so it was just – I had the great – fortune of being caught up in that end of game when they were all hugging each other and crying and it, that was probably the most emotional win and possibly the most needed win in Maryland football history. Yeah, I, and looking at it a few days later, the impact's even greater. It, it was huge when it happened. I went back and looked at the videos that we have. And if you have not seen them, should go take a look on triptalk.com and our post game and, and the view from the field after Maryland won. It, it was that big a deal. Yeah, you know, view? it's funny. You, you know, we've, you've been able to make a few videos like that, and uh, uh, it might be your last one after you got chastised, but uh, <laughs> so be it. Uh, but you need to go look at that video. Not of, well, also the post game with yourself and Mason and myself, but look at the video. Wayne had about, it was only about three minutes, and he seemed to get a, get a hold of every key ingredient to the team. And uh, it was really special. You could see the emotion that they were emitting and the emotion you were emitting. I don't know if you've seen that. Go to terptalk.com. Feature it tonight, Wayne. Okay, so what people listening can watch it. It's already been watched by thousands of people, and it right. was it was really something. But put it up feature tonight, okay? I think okay. I, I, I will do everybody. that. Speaking yeah. of things to feature and to look at down the road, I know we're up against the clock here, and you got Dennis and you got the Ravens coming up on the next segment. Uh, Young Turks today spent about 20 minutes on the phone with Johnny Holiday, the voice of the Maryland Terrapins. And they're going to have um, an exclusive look at how Johnny saw the game and how he got to Maryland and a, a lot of that history and the best games that Johnny Holiday called, at least in his opinion, as the Terps' main announcer since 1979. And that's something that's going to go in our archives uh, as one of the. It was just. I'm going to have to start. I'm going to have to start going to the Young Terps to get my guests. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They you won't know, come Mason's on. Really, hey, they won't come on Mason's, for you and me, you know. No, but they love Mason. Yeah. And you can see why. Yeah, and Mason. He's, he's got his niche there. And they were walking out of the press conference, and there were a few cookies left. And somebody said, hey, Mason couldn't make the presser yesterday. So they said, hey, take these back to the office to Mason. Nobody gives me extra food, yeah. but Mason gets cookies. Well, Mason's and on that note, I'm going to move on here. Bruce, thanks for having me on. That was one of the greatest wins we've ever had, and it's on the Bowling Green on Saturday night at 6 o'clock. We'll all be watching on ESPN+. Plus. And don't forget to, number one, send me my subscription. You told me you could. And number, yep. and number two, let's not take this team for granted. All right, we'll talk, I'll, I'll talk about it later on, but don't take this team for granted. Wayne, thanks a lot for coming on. It was a, uh, again, Tonight, put up holiday tomorrow night, all right? But tonight, I want you to put up your video, okay? And everybody take a look at it. It was a four-minute video that was fantastic. That, uh, all right. It, it, it parred the uh, lacrosse championship video. But this one had a different kind of meaning. It did. I mean, the championship men's lacrosse video was awesome. 
because it was something that uh, myself personally had waited so long for, and even you got into the the mix. But uh, this one was special. Watch it. All right, it's a real tribute to the Maryland Terrapins. Wayne, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks for having me. Go Turks. All right, this is Bruce Posner. You are listening to Coons Ford presents the Sports Maven. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio, thirteen hundred. Welcome back to Coons Ford Turp Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. All right, back here on segment two. And as always, we bring in my Ravens expert, good friend, and overall voice of the Sunday Sports Voice. And that, of course, is Dennis Kalatis. Dennis, welcome in, my friend. Hey, Bruce. Thanks for having me on. Always my pleasure, my friend. So... Khalil Mack, were you shocked when you found out he went to the Bears for two first-rounders? Uh, I wasn't shocked he was traded. I was shocked by the two first-rounders. That's, that's really unheard of for a defensive player. Uh, I think it's the second time it's ever happened. Fred Young, back in the 70s, got a contract and a trade in a similar manner, but uh, John Gruden's getting beat up, but he had no choice. There was no money left after they signed Derek Carr last year. After they extended him, they didn't have the cap space to re-sign Khalil Mack. And uh, big plus for the Bears. I, he's a, he's a winner. He really is. I mean, uh, he could be. He could make that team happen. I think that he, arguably, certainly one of the best uh, best men at his position in the game. Yeah, it's not a good look for the for the Raiders though. It's not good for their fan base or their team. Imagine trading Ray Lewis and his prime for two first round draft picks. People around here would have lost their minds, and rightfully so. Yeah, they lost their mind if he did it his last year, you know, because uh, do they win the Super Bowl without Ray? Not a shot. Yeah, Not going to happen. You know it and I know it. And uh, Ray certainly helped out Maryland last week with the big pep talk the night before. So uh, 52 keeps his f- hands on the pulse, as they say. Le'Veon Bell, it looks like his days might be numbered at Pittsburgh. Yeah, can't figure that one out, Bruce. Uh, even if he comes in now, he's not going to play in the opener versus the Brown. Uh, James Conner will get the start, so I don't know how that works. It, I think he gets paid about $875,000 per game, and uh, he's not going to collect the first one if he's not ready to go. I can't figure this one out either. Well, it's a pittance if he gets a long-term deal that he wants, and, uh, you know, uh, don't you think he should if Gurley got it? No, he's not going to get one from Pittsburgh. I don't know who gives him a long-term contract. He'll be 27 years old by the end of the season. Unfortunately, running backs get the short end of the stick, Bruce. Um, I don't, I don't know who signed him and for what, but there remains to be seen. But it won't be the Pittsburgh Steelers, that's for sure. Dennis, what was your take on the Maryland win? I mean, we we had talked about it. I don't think you thought they were going to win from our conversation. But I did. I actually called. I actually called the upset. I I called it all along. Had a good hunch. Had seen all the videos of the players you know, being fired up and. I thought they had circled the Wagons, and it helped. It was a, a home game, so I wasn't surprised at all. They, they definitely showed up, and even after the rain delay, they were able to take the momentum and keep it for the end of the game. Well, let's talk about Matt Canada. What a coaching job he did. There's no question he thoroughly outdid uh, Tom Herman, and uh, his sweep, his power sweeps were something to behold. Yeah, that jet sweep was something else, Bruce. So, no, they ran all over, but I think Texas or perhaps uh, – we consider who they're going to open up every year going forward. It shouldn't be the Terps in 2019. They will not play the Terps again in regular season, maybe in my lifetime. It will not happen after these two losses because Texas Nation is reeling from it. I mean, really reeling. And uh, Tom Herman, you know, he's on the line, as they say. That's not eight and four team, though, or nine and three team. It really isn't. I mean, Maryland, you know, Maryland really was in control of that game just for a little spell there in the third quarter when they lost the lead, but they got it back and uh, hats off, hats off to Matt Canada and the entire squad. Very emotional, Dennis. I know you saw our videos and everything. Very, very emotional game. No, it was great. It was also great when they came out with 10 men on the field and it was also very gracious of Texas to decline the penalty. Uh, certainly agree. So let's talk real quick about Sunday. The Ravens open, against, open up against Buffalo. This is a game that started out last spring as a three-point favorite situation for the Ravens. Now they're seven. All right. Why is it seven? Well, uh, you have to look no further than the quarterback position. Who's under center? Nathan Peterman. That just doesn't... Uh exactly strike fear into the uh, Ravens' defense heart, right? So if uh, Nathan Peterman comes out on their center, they're going to be in trouble. 
there's no way they can start the Josh Allen, the rookie out of Wyoming. Uh, Allen Team Bank is not the place where you want to start your pro career. Uh, he may never recover from the beating he's going to take. So we'll get Peterman, and uh, I don't think the Ravens will look past him. I think I don't think I think Buffalo's going to have a very hard time scoring any points. I can't see them putting up more than 10 or 13 points in the Ravens, and I see our offense uh, putting uh, in the in the 30 point range. Uh, on the scoreboard up against uh, the Bills. Dennis, your gut feel, your gut feel that ESPN gave the Ravens a 3.5% chance of being the uh, Super Bowl champions, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the first place, the, you know, the Patriots, who were number one, was 16%, and the Ravens were, in, I think, in the top 10. So there is some respect out there, but uh, what has to go right for them this year besides Flacco, or is that the, is that the unknown factor? Well, I think it's health, health, and more health. This team will be very healthy for the first time in about four seasons, and they'll go as far as the health takes them. The NFL is very much a game of attrition, Bruce. We all know that. And if they're still standing tall halfway through the season, they have a shot to get into the postseason and truly make some noise. Yeah, I, I certainly yeah. think so. You see him as a, what, a 10-game a 10, 10 winner? Yeah, I think their ceiling is 10 games, and I think their floor is about seven games. So I think that's the range, a 10-6, 7-9, depending on health. If this team can stay healthy, uh, again, they can make some noise in the playoffs. There's some proven veterans. I love all the youth. I love all the draft picks that have made the team. I think they're faster. They're deeper. They're more talented. Uh, now, for that matter, so is Cleveland and uh, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. But uh, it's John Harbaugh. I think he's the best coach of the division. So I'll take my chances with Coach Harbaugh. Well, those first five games is a tremendous – difficult start due to the fact that uh, three of them are on the road at Cincinnati, at Pittsburgh, and Cleveland. It's, a, it's you know, three division games on the road to start the season. It's pretty tough, uh, Dennis. It's pretty tough, but if they can weather the storm, if they can come out of there, three and two, uh, four and one will be phenomenal, but if they can get out of that three and two, they'll be in good shape where they have a very favorable uh, slate the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Dennis, what's going on at Coons? Are we out of 18 yet, or you still got a few left? We got a few left, and Ford is still giving us some tremendous incentives on them. Still some 0% after Bruce. Uh, if you look around the uh, the country and in inventories with all manufacturers, 0% has pretty much gone away because everybody's manager inventory levels better this summer than in years past. So 0% is something rare. Uh, you know, the rates have moved up 5 or 6% right now for 60 or 72 months. But there's still some 0% deals, especially in the Ford Explorer. You can save a lot of money right now by, by taking advantage of all the 0% offer in the Coons Baltimore Ford. Yeah, the Explorer, the Explorer, you have a rebate on that, too. What a car that, what a truck that is. Yeah, you can get 1000 bucks back plus um, 0% for 60 months. I mean, it just, it just makes all the sense in the world. It's a lot of vehicle. That 0% does save you a lot of money. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, I know the cars are coming and going at the same time. I was by there the other day, and uh, you, are, you are loaded. It's tough to get around that parking lot right now, Dennis. It's tough, and uh, you know, the more we put out, the more we get in. So it's one of those things. It's like the tide comes in, and the tide goes out, and uh, everybody saves a lot of money. Coons Baltimore Ford. Hey, are the boys looking for a car for me? You know, they're always looking for a car for you. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell Deludis. He hasn't called me in a couple of days. He's like... A couple uh, of days, that's, that's too long. Usually it's a 72-hour roll with you. What are you talking about? He was on lay. He told me he sold like four cars on Labor Day, and he was working me the whole day. All right? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's insane. We, we A lot of vehicles were delivered over Labor Day weekend, and... All right, continue on to this week. Uh, that's great, Dennis. All right, my friend, thanks a lot for checking in. We'll see you tomorrow on the Sunday Sports Voice. It's on Thursday, and that will be, uh, I'll be on your show. What time tomorrow, 4.30? 4.35, today. 4.35, I'll be on. Everybody tune in and get the Coons Ford. I always tell people, buy their cars on Saturday to get that special luncheon you have. <laughs> you're, you're, tell, you're telling them right, Bruce. It's a phenomenal luncheon. All right, my friend, take care. Thank you. Go, go Ravens. Go Terps. All right. This is Bruce Poser. You are listening to Coons Ford Terp Talk this Wednesday night and every Wednesday night for the past 10 years here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. This is Coons Ford Terp Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. Once again, I want to welcome the Oregon Grill to the uh, Turp Talk family. You want a romantic getaway in the heart of Maryland's horse country? The Oregon Grill proudly serves American cuisine in a luxurious, renovated 19th century stone farmhouse. The Oregon Grill won the 2017 
Diner's Choice Award. Tremendous outdoor setting for lunch or dinner. My favorite there is the seafood cob. Love it. Check out the amazing menus at theoregongrill.com. Seven days a week, we have eight-hour lunch specials. It's a myth about the Oregon Grill not having an option that is strictly an expensive restaurant. It's far from that. There's reasonable pricing on the menu. Get out there to the Oregon Grill. I'll be there tomorrow night. 1201 Shawan Road. Call 410-771-0505 for reservations. Once again, that is the Oregon Grill. And, of course, we also want to welcome... Uh, the Valley Inn, uh, Ted Bauer really renovated the place. This is the place to be. It is mobbed there, uh, certainly on weekends, but also during the week. All kinds of different settings, a great dining room, a great bar set up, TVs uh, to watch all the sporting events. Book your parties or business meetings in the Valley Room that can seat up to 85 people. The atmosphere is upbeat in the historic setting at 10 501 Falls Road. Call 410-828-0002 for reservations. All right, soccer squad. It's a, uh, it's a, I don't know what the word is, what the right word is, but they cannot score. Once again, a 0-0 shutout or a nil-nil game against Virginia. That's on top of the uh, Stanford game. And the one thing about... Uh, soccer, not only do you play your 90 minutes, but then there's two 10-minute overtimes. So you're talking that's 220 minutes without scoring, and then you add on the 2 nothing defeat they suffered at the hands of Washington. Now you're talking about uh, 300 minutes without a goal. It's a problem. It's not a problem with defense. Defense has been great. I mean, they dominated uh, somewhat both of those games against Stanford and Virginia, but you got to put the biscuit in the basket, as they say, and soccer's having trouble doing it. Now, of course, field hockey is undefeated. Beat Duke 4-3, to I think, to go 5-0, and which is an incredible start to the season, especially with the caliber of schedule that they play. And uh, Missy is once again, uh, I think they're number four in the nation. I don't know if they moved up this week, but uh, great start for them. Big day for the Ryder Cup yesterday and today. Phil, Tiger, Bryson DeChambeau added to the American team. It was kind of like a foregone conclusion. And I think the next conclusion is something happens uh, in the next week uh, that's dramatic. I think we're going to see Tony Finau, who's been in the top 10, it seems like, every week. And I think Tony Finau will be the new addition, the final captain's pick. And then Thomas Bjorn picked today for the Euro team. Sergio, which absolutely just knocks me over. The guy has played horrible, horrible this year. I think he's missed the last five or six cuts. I mean, I don't understand that. Ian Poulter, who's been fantastic uh, with certainly his 12-4 and four record in the in the Ryder Cup, is stands out. Henrik Stenson, who's been marginal, and Paul Casey, who's had a good year. Those are the four picks for the Euro squad, and the teams are set. And look for Tiger to play with Bryson DeChambeau, and this will be the team of the steely-eyed dudes because these guys are tough. They are tough golfers, and uh, I think the matchup is great. Certainly right now, nobody in the world is playing as good as Bryson DeChambeau, who won the first two weeks of the FedEx Cup tournament and is certainly in position to win it all. Well, to no shock, but I don't believe it for a second, Rick Pitino announced his retirement saying, I'm finished coaching, and certainly citing the aggravation he's had in the past three years, of which he still denies any knowledge of, and uh, trying to get his cases dismissed, uh, both the prostitution case where the assistant coaches were bringing recruits into prostitutes and then the latest payola scam with uh, the kid Bowen, Brian Bowen, and he denies any knowledge of it. He took a lie detector test to that account and apparently passed it. But uh, Mr. Patino, I don't know. You just read me a couple tweets here about uh, the 
the Pittsburgh linemen. What is their take on that right now about them and Levy and Bell? Yeah, basically, um, I mean, Levy and Bell didn't report to the Steelers, and that was the cutoff for people that need to be playing by Week One. And the offensive line isn't too happy. They're they're saying that he's selfish. Um, they're saying that he's making a lot more money than they are. And I think Marquise Pouncey was one of those guys. That's going to be a huge loss for the Steelers. We're going to see what James Conner's made of, but. Um, if the Ravens go into Pittsburgh week four without Jimmy Smith, they might be aided by the Steelers not having Le'Veon Bell. Well, it's certainly, uh, I think Le'Veon Bell is the key to that team. He's, he stands out, in my opinion, along with Todd Gurley, as the best running backs in, in uh, the NFL. And Todd Gurley got paid. And I think that's what started the whole thing. $65 million, I right. think, for Gurley. That's what started the whole thing. And he, and Le'Veon Bell was willing to give up uh, $875,000 to make a point. But, you know, you reach a certain point where you just, uh, they could throw in the towel on them. I mean, they won before Le'Veon Bell and they'll win after Le'Veon Bell. But uh, we shall see. Last night, I don't know if you saw any of it, four-hour and 45-minute match between Rafa Nadal and Dominic Thiem at the U.S. Open. It was an ultimate classic. It really was. Went down to a fifth-set tiebreaker and... uh, Dominic Thiem, I think he's from Australia, just hit an overhead that was out by a little bit, and that was it. Nadal moves on. Uh, it just it seems like it's endless with him. So uh, should be interesting. He's in the semis now. It's funny. The quarterfinal losers got half a million dollars or $455,000. Can you imagine that? This is the top eight. This isn't even the top four. I think the semifinalists might get 850 or something of that nature. It's absolutely incredible, the money that's in tennis right now. And the other thing that's incredible is, once again, no Americans. No Americans uh, are, are left standing. John Isner was the last one knocked out. And uh, so be it. Just got a text from Todd. That Maryland has moved up to number three in field hockey and will play number 12, Delaware, and number 19, Harvard, this week. Uh, See what happens. But uh, Todd's on top of the hockey, on top of of, of soccer. We listened to that game somewhat together on the phone the other night. Just unbelievable that Maryland didn't score. So in my eyes, I took a look at the uh, NCAA schedule this week. First of all, Maryland... A 16-point favorite against Bowling Green, which bothers me a little bit. They lost 58-24 to to Oregon last week. Uh, their quarterback, Jarrett Doji, I think is his house, pronounced his name, 28, 22 for 38, two interceptions. Uh, a great receiver in Scott Miller seems to always get open. He had 13 catches for 166 yards. And defense, obviously they didn't have much defense because they gave up 58 points. Uh, the last time Maryland played them <clears throat> was when Dino Babbers was the coach. 48-27, to 27, Bowling Green won. Not a memorable day. And that was in 2015, three years ago. So this obviously is a comeback game for that. that uh, Maryland goes into the MAC. But Bowling Green was one of the worst teams in the country last year. And it doesn't seem like they picked up where they left off. Looking at their schedule, who do they play all MAC? They do play at Georgia Tech. That's probably a payday for them, and that's about it. The rest of them are their, their MAC games or maybe a non-conference here and there. But uh, this is their biggest game, and it's, play, it's at 6 o'clock. It's not on regular TV. It's on ESPN+. Plus. I think if you want to buy it just for the one game, it's two ninety nine or something to that extent. But uh, probably the only game this year that's not on. But that's Bowling Green, and that's at 6 o'clock Saturday, and – you know, I'm not talking about the future. You got everybody say, oh, they're going to go 4 0. They could go do this, do that. I, you know, I'm going to take it one play at a time. Yeah, it was a great win against Texas, but this is a team that went 4 and 8 last year, and they got to prove themselves on the field. And, you know, you don't want to go to Bowling Green and fall behind. Uh, 16 point favorite for Maryland. That's as, that is as absurd as being a 14 and a half point underdog to Texas, a team that they beat last year with their uh, with the same two quarterbacks. I have to tell you when when I go back to think about that, thinking about that game, I just can't. It's hard to define the emotion if you were there. Anybody who was there will talk about it. 
but just the way the kids took the field and it was all in for Jordan McNair and the way they played and the way they played together and uh, just the spread out of of their confidence and everything else, it was just a sight to behold. It really was a sight to behold for the Terps and just a great win, one that I'll never forget, one of the biggest football wins in a while. And uh, let's hope it continues as all the other stuff continues. But right now, Matt Canada, the team's in good hands. I did I did second guess a couple decisions, not going for two points when it was 30 to 29. But uh, I can't second guess his offense because it was fantastic. That first drive, I asked him if it was the best scripted series he ever had. I don't know how it could have been better. They came out and went down the field and let Texas know that it was going to be a game right from the get-go. And Canada, you know, that you know, when we think about Walt Bell, you almost have to break up laughing with the way Maryland, with similar kinds of talent, just just dominated the field, certainly in the first half, so putting up 24 points and uh, able to score from every which angle. And uh, the field goal kicker was a nice game for Joe Petrino. I want to see him kick one left-handed eventually. But uh, just a great job by uh, Matt Canada and the entire staff. And uh, can't wait, you know, can't wait for that first home game against Temple next week. Really looking around the NCAA right now. Clemson, 12-point favorite at Texas A&M. That's a lot. That's a lot at College Station. You know, I would certainly go the Texas A&M way. Penn State struggled to beat Appalachian State. But Appalachian State has done this before as far as pulling upsets and staying in games. And uh, James Franklin was right in when he's saying at the end of the day it's a win. He's 1-0, and and that's how he's got to look at it. But they had to score late to win that game or to send it to overtime. USC at Stanford. Stanford, once again, off to a good start. Uh, USC should be a great game. I think that's on Saturday night late. And uh, Michigan State, tough win against Utah State. They traveled to Arizona State. They're also favorites. And uh, it's kind of interesting to hear Coach Harbaugh getting blasted, certainly from Michigan faithful and uh, Braylon Edwards from the Big Ten Network, I thought he was way out of line attacking this one and that one on the team for not being up to the task. He, you know, I thought Harbaugh was right. You know, attack the coach, don't attack the players. We're talking about college players, and you should never attack them. You could say, you know, it's one thing to say that uh, Brashad Perriman should be let go. He's a pro. He was making three, four million dollars a year. It's another thing to say a college kid when he makes a mistake should let go because they're playing for their scholarships no money you know just uh i always have trouble with that braylon edwards was wrong from the big 10 network so also what a weekend we got to look forward to maryland against uh bowling green and then the ravens have their first game talked about it with dennis uh i loved right i love the off season of course the Mar- maryland is always the pick of august they're the August team of the year, once again, going undefeated. 5-0 and in the exhibition game. It's still fun to beat the Redskins, or should I say to squash them. But there was nothing like that Texas win last week. And look, the Ravens got to get off to a good start. Uh, a loss at home, you know, you got to protect your house. And they certainly owe Buffalo something. There's no doubt about it. And so as this show comes to an end, once again, hats off to Matt Canada and the entire coaching staff and uh, certainly to the quarterback, Kasim Hill, 17 for 29, no interceptions, 220 yards. What a great game he called. What a great game he executed, I should say. Jason Jones, what a a breath of fresh air to see him play so well. And I guarantee you that Ty Johnson will be heard from this week, as well as Lolo Harrison. You never know how the Maryland Terrapins are going to strike with Matt Canada at the home. And uh, in my final few seconds, I'll do a tribute to Matt Canada by singing, Oh, Canada, thy son and native land, or true patriot love with all thy son's command. Listen, Matt Canada, you were great last week. Keep it up. Terps, keep it up. And uh, we will see you on Saturday once again to preview the game, to preview the Ravens game. And remember, Sunday, Coons Ford 
I'm sorry. Science and Kirk presents In the Nest on Sunday. First show of the year with Donald and Carl Science. Have a great week, everybody.